Burma, also known as Myanmar, is a country with a long history and a rich culture that has, after decades of military rule in recent years, taken the first steps to transition into a disciplined democracy. In 2011, the Burmese military regime dissolved the ruling junta and handed power over to the Union Parliament and then President Thein Sein, reserving considerable influence for themselves. On November 8th, Burma is scheduled to hold its first openly contested election in 25 years with hopes that it will be credible, transparent, and inclusive. As the elections draw near, we watch intently to see if Burma lives up to its promises. Committee staff has traveled to Burma to observe political dynamics and assess the humanitarian situation in the lead-up to this election, and I find that I am both optimistic and pessimistic. The ultimate success of political transition remains uncertain. How should we in Congress judge a systematically manipulated democratic transition in light of what may be a credible, transparent, and inclusive election process on November 8th? If the odds are intentionally in the ruling party's favor, but they have a clean election, how should the U.S. respond? We know that the election is not the end-all, be-all for Burma. We will watch the political transition unfold in the coming months to look for a peaceful transition and sustained dedication to transparency, openness, and reform. We welcome a sustained transition to democracy while it is yet to be seen. And if the, in the meantime, we will urge restraint on further expansion of U.S.-Burma relations. I look forward to hearing from our distinguished panels what, should be, uh, what we should expect from the, trans, uh, from the election and the ensuing transition and what it means for the people of Burma. There are other major issues to discuss here today. On October 15th, the government, the military, and eight ethnic armed organizations signed a joint ceasefire agreement after two years of negotiations. About a dozen armed ethnic groups declined to sign. I wait to see how the remaining ethnic armed groups will be reintegrated into the process, but how the post-ceasefire uh, political dialogue will take shape and how Burma intends to address the humanitarian costs and challenges the conflict has wreaked on their country. Speaking of uncertain futures, I am saddened by the resolute denial of rights to the Rohingya people. After the 2012 riot, riots that displaced nearly, nearly 150,000 Rakhine and uh, uh, Rohin, uh, Rohingya, uh, there are little improvement in living standards. Our staff uh, recently visited Rakhine uh, to investigate the con uh, conditions uh, and uh, uh, look at the uh, displaced uh, camps where over 143,000 people still live. At the Rakhine uh, camps, residents asked the United States to provide solar power jobs and funding for education. And this is what the homes look like. You can see them on your screens or on the screens uh, on the walls. At the uh, Rohingya camps, homes were literally sinking into rice paddies that the houses have been built on. If you see here, the disparity is quite stark. The Rohingya's uh, asks weren't about the amenities. Uh, what amenities were missing. They want to be able to feed and provide for their families and for their children. As the monsoon season recedes, we may, may see another repeat of earlier this year, tens of thousands of migrants boarding rickety boats to aimlessly tackle the seas in search of hope in Thailand, Malaysia, and Indonesia. The United States alone cannot be the solution to this problem. The Burmese government must address this heinous violation of human rights. I do, not, I, do not, uh, I do want to recognize the Burmese government for making commendable advances in its economy, its political system, and civil society. The aperture is widened for greater freedoms and voices to be heard, but not sufficiently. It is also clear how much hard work remains to be done. 